I am so excited to talk to you both. Thank you so much for coming on the All Sorts podcast. I feel like right now I'm very much talking to plant-based royalty. Ugh. Well, <laughs> we are honored to, to talk be to you. With you. I am. Um, I want to start. I want to start with you, Anne. Um, and I want to start by asking you because you, I mean, you started this all like you started cooking plant-based meals for your family when your husband's research suggested that a plant-based diet can reverse heart disease. Like, like, how did you respond? You're like, oh, I guess this is what we're doing now. And like, how did your kids respond to that shift as a mom who also cooks, you know, plant-based meals for her kids? Like, what was that like for you? Well, interestingly enough, back at that time, unlike today's world, there was no internet. So I couldn't just click in uh, what's a good black bean recipe with, that's plant-based. Um, we didn't know anybody who was eating plant-based. We never even, I mean, the words vegan and vegetarian were new vocabulary words for a 12 year your daughter uh, back then, or 12, a 12 year old. So it was just something you had, you did. I mean, you experimented, you fooled around. And you know what? I'm so glad you asked that question because that's actually the crux of, of this book being like, be a plant-based woman warrior. By the way, the title of our new book. Oh, I don't ready? Have book. Be a plant-based woman warrior. Live fierce, fierce stay, stay bold, bold, eat, eat delicious. delicious. So the, re the but, but your question that you just asked was really sort of one of the big pillars behind why I pushed so hard to get this book written because she did pick up the the sort of the banner, the motto, the coat of arms, and be like, okay, as he says, we're going to eat whole food, plant based. Here I go. I'm a full time teacher. I have four kids, and you know we, we eat at home every night. And here we go. She did it from just stick to or her, her whatever energy. And we, I mean, we were all high school, college, young college age kids and we're so not helpful. And she- Did you complain like, oh. like all the time? But, but you know what's interesting? I think in a funny way, no, this is really gonna sound crazy. I think it was easier for me then than it is for people today. Yeah. Because today- the world is swamped with all the vegan, the, the junk. vegan junk food that is so tempting oh, that you sorry. just can't believe it, you know? So, it, no, just turn it off. I do. It's my husband calling me. So anyway, that's that's what I think. <laughs> um, well, I'm hey. on a <laughs> She's talking to him. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, I mean, it's a first, a live call in from Dr. Hesselston on the pod. Gosh, tell him we're whole you talk. Okay, I'm talking because she's talking to my dad. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but um, no, she she no, was amazing not, how she picked not, up with, not. there was no internet back then no. and there was no whole, whole foods or like in Cleveland, Ohio, there was no, there was no whole foods. There was like mm -hmm. no health food stores. So um, like I've heard recently a great motto that says hundred percent is easier than 99%. And they had to go hundred percent and figure it out then because that's what was, why is he keep calling us? My dad's now calling me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brian, can you call my dad to see what's going on? <laughs> uh, so sorry. Um, uh, so my mom just would pick up the helm and went for it. And so that is like, I love that you asked that question out of the gate because that's the reason behind this, be a plant-based woman warrior, just be fierce, be bold, go with this, stick with this and you won't believe the results. Not just, you know, three days later, a week later, a year later, 40 years later, um, it's just, it's remarkable. It is and remarkable. And like, what resources and like, did you, so I remember I, because I went vegetarian long as a teenager, long before I went fully plant-based. Um, and like my first thing was to go to the bookstore and I got the vegetarian times, oh. like big vegetarian times. It was like my first cookbook. And I was like, my mind is blown right now. Like what resources did you find that like helped you? 
Well, actually, uh, in truth, we were in Cleveland, and the West Coast was McDougal, and who was and uh, who no didn't did, had never heard of Ornish. Okay. When my husband started, had never heard of Ornish, um, but McDougal, and so we with so there was somebody. But you know, back in the in the early '80s when we started. Um, to go to California was like going to Europe. I mean, you, you just, you know, it was, there was no communic, not that great, you know, much communications. So one day a patient of, of my husband's, after he, they'd been doing it for a while, the came whole food plant-based research, came in and said, you know, I just saw an article in, uh, uh, Discovery, Discovery magazine? magazine about a man on the West Coast who's doing the same thing as you. And it was Dean Ornish who was doing the same thing. But as far as recipes, you know, McDougal had, we did get some ideas from them. Um, but they have a newsletter or something. And there was, but I, physically, well, you know what? We had, my, my husband had been speaking in Puerto Rico and so I had gone with him and we had rice and beans and we loved the rice and beans. So that's kind of where we started. We really started out with the idea of rice and beans. And you know what? We've never left rice and beans. To this day, we it's love still, it. It's still- a, We had it last night. Yeah, a go-to and in fact, my husband for lunch had leftover rice and beans from last night and for holidays, et cetera. I mean, I'm not saying that's all we eat, no. but you know, it, it got to be a basis. And then you, from there and, you know, I mean, basically you just have to eat simply. I mean, it's so easy to eat simply. Then you can get complicated and fancy if you choose. Yeah. You don't really even have to have recipes. I mean, we had broccoli and potatoes and sweet potatoes and all the wonderful vegetables. I think that's such incredible advice, especially today, because you mentioned, I mean, there are just so many vegan options, like the alternative meats, the alternative cheeses, which, you know, for me, like, I, like every once in a while, like, I, I love that, you know, but it's, it's the simplicity and you don't need you don't need 75 million recipes and you don't need 75 million voices in your ear. It's like, eat the plants. Like there's a reason why rice and beans, like the world over have been a staple from like the natto and Japanese culture to like black, yeah. you know, Cuban black beans. Like there's a reason why those foods have literally allowed like civilizations to survive for millennia. Yeah. No, um, I totally no, Desiree, agree. you're totally right. Like that's every, every, a, a, a culture has this ecology and for them to survive as a culture with that ecology from you know when time began there is fiber-based things which are the grasses and the greens and the roots and the tubers and the and then maybe the grains and maybe the fruits like it's just that total like how could humans evolve and survive successfully in these cultures is with that stuff that they knew they could depend upon maybe somebody caught a wee rabbit or a grout or this or that or whatever creature or fish. And that was a, like a crouton on top of what they ate. But it definitely, like our gut, as you know, wants and loves and seeks what plants have. And that's fiber. I mean, animals, you know, have bones to keep them up and plants have fiber that keeps them up. You can't get it elsewhere. You can't get it in a, in a Luna bar. You have to get it in a sweet potato. <laughs> I love that. You can't get in a Luna bar. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose they could put it in there, but it didn't come by that natural. <laughs> yeah, the beautiful matrix, how it had you a know, lattice that's set up with the water and the fiber and the, mm, it's yeah. just beautiful. So Jane, I want to ask you, you know, what was it like growing up whole food plant-based in this household? Um, you're, I think you're, you're tipping me up here to talk about how I have three brothers and <laughs> I have three, two, two older, one younger brother. And many of you have probably heard of Rip, my oldest brother who um, has plant strong and all his great uh, forward motion with that, with that whole message. And I've, I've written three books with him, but growing up uh, with three brothers, we were all athletes, like nationally ranked swimmer athletes. And um, so we were all just these beautiful 
machines that eat and drink and train. And so I was like insanely fit and in my late teens and I'm swimming for University of Michigan. We had some great Canadians, by the way, who swam with us. I know Belinda and Michelle, all these great women. Anyway, um, I started to get concerned about my body, my shape, my curves. And I was thinking about like, you know, I have these three brothers. So I kind of grew up tough and, and able to just be in there. They're all the fellas and, you know, could train my patootie off and keep up with them. Anyway, um, I was spending so much time in my mind wondering about like, what am I going to eat today? I got to train and I, I don't like how my, my pants are tighter. I don't like how this is fitting and, I, and my shoulders are this broad and my, my body is this, bad. I was just like, so much time in my head thinking about my body, my identity, food, flesh, fat, bah, awful. And I knew my brothers hadn't spent a minute or a moment with any of those concerns. And just, like, I was just weighed down by them and they floating off in their beautiful existence. <laughs> um, as you know, and anyway, so my parents luckily went plant based around this time in my life. And so we all start, we'd spent our summers home training. If we weren't athletes, I don't think that we would have caught on as, as, as quickly because we came home and we had to train with our home team and we would eat whole food plant-based uh, adventures that my mom was up to. Again, we were so not helpful and we would eat it. And like we'd go to our friend's house and we'd no, have like actually, pizza. I can remember what Jane, when Jane was married, Oh, I, I'm talking Wait, about, I, I know you're jumping ahead. I'm just jumping a little ahead. Hold on. So what happened is Jane. pausing it because you're jumping ahead. You're ruining the plot. Okay. Um, so what the, 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 what happened is I started to eat whole food plant-based, not just at home, but in school, which was really hard. Like university of Michigan, you know, the, the, the collegiate diet dining system was not designed for you know, there was no such thing as gluten-free. There was no such thing as vegetarian or vegan. So just sort of had to weave and make my way. And, you know, things still went fine, went well. I swam that, you know, great. I've been, made NCAAs, won big tens, all that stuff. So I stuck with it and I started feeling much better in my body and identifying with my, my, my physical self and, and being comfortable with that. And so a friend of mine who went plant-based, she said, Jane, gosh, I love being plant-based because I don't, I don't suffer from this food head every day. This this worry, this weight, this burden that we carry as women. And I was like, that's a great name for it. What I've been, what I had too, and feel like this whole food plant-based diet really is just unburdening of, of all that. So that was great for me. And I love that we've been able to stick with it. And I feel so lucky that that's the time in which um, their efforts came into my life. How lucky, so lucky. And we all, I've got, there's four of us and we all went on to marry spouses who are whole food plant-based and we all have kids. So now there's 20 of us who are whole food plant-based and she wants to talk about the oh, wedding, wedding, just, weddings. Yeah. No, well, oh, everybody's weddings. We had black beans and rice. That was the meal at the weddings, <laughs> believe it or not. We had, Except, we had portobellos, no. we had portobellos and, and barbecue portobello. And Rip did, Rip had lasagna. Right. But, um, what My I was going to say recipe. is Jane, who has now written five cookbooks, done the recipes. When they were first married, and for a number of years, we would go, we had dinner with them a lot, and they were delicious. But we looked forward every night to one recipe that she always made, and that was burritos. And that was Jane's recipe, and that's what we always had. And I think now of the huge variety of food that you create. And back then, it so was just my burritos. It was just burritos. <laughs> my husband, luckily, is a great chef, and he cooks a ton of stuff. He's he's better than all of us. Um, like all of our knockout recipes and a lot of our books are his. Like Rip's lasagna is Brian's recipe. Are like well, based on no, it's his recipe. Well, and and that's also kind of and I. I hear that more often than you would think, especially like with five books and you're like, okay, so your spouse doesn't cook at all. And they're like, actually, no, my spouse is an amazing cook. <laughs> no, right. it's great. It's great. Like, um, oh, Brian but, he, but, he, but he's good. Cause what, what a lot of people need as an, a, a comfortable on-ramp is something like sloppy Joe's. 
which I don't know if you have, you have those in Canada, though, don't you? Yeah, it's. I feel like they're not as like popular here, but we like I think of them as an American food, but we totally know them. Yeah, it's um, like we would never go with poutine, but I recently my kids thought poutine. Look, mommy, look at you can get French fries with melted s'mores like chocolate and marshmallows. I'm like, oh my god, that's gravy and cheese curd. No, don't get don't get that on your French fries. So, um, I've no, never but, heard but of poutine. It's a Canadian thing. So it's. it's it's a uniquely Quebecois uh, food. There's a lot in, in Quebec. They have a lot of like really specific foods. Um, none of them plant, I mean, all could be made plant-based, but none of them plant-based things like tortillere, which is like a meat pie and like poutine, which is, yeah, gravy and cheese curds. There's there's all sorts of things. We were driving through Ontario. Was, oh my gosh, it was yeah. something else. But um, like, uh, anyway, yes. The variety, the more we, the more we cook this way, the better it gets. Like my mom did all the recipes in my dad's book in 2007. Again, we were so not helpful. We were all just, you know, kind of getting on with our lives, getting married and little kids, not helpful. She kept saying, that was so good what we have at your house. Can you please write it down? And I'm like, I don't remember. Yeah. Sorry. Like we were just so not helpful. Your burritos but, may just be in here. And then. Uh, my brother Rip started doing books and I did all the recipes for him in Plant Strong, which was so fun, but it was just still like this, this, uh, you know, there's no pictures, it was just whatever. And then my mom and I did the Prevent Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook because these heart disease patients who we really need to have stick to be very compliant with their guidelines because the heart disease is something different than, you know, all oh, people who want to lose some weight or turn around their diabetes, which they, people have a little more wiggle room and in uh, like sticking with it, but this heart disease, no meat, no dairy, no added oil, minimal salt, minimal sweet. Um, and so these all, and, and no nuts and no avocado. So these, like my, my, my dad's and mom's original book and our cookbook, really, we call these plant perfect because that they, 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 not that nuts and avocado aren't plants, but that's, those are really, yeah. The guidelines. So then, when Rip did Plant Strong and the recipes with him, and with the Seven Day Rescue and the Engine Two Cookbook, which I just made some zucchini bread out of, so it's over there. Um, I got a zucchini the size of my arm out of my garden today, and I thought, what do I do? It's going to rot. What do I do? So I made the zucchini bread. Anyway, those all have very similar guidelines: no meat, no dairy, no added oil, minimal salt, minimal sweet. But we do use some avocado. We do use nuts, especially like in some sauces and things. Um, and so my, when my mom and I did this book, be a plant-based woman warrior, live fierce, fierce stay, stay bold, bold, eat delicious. delicious. We're, we're still trying to get our subtitle down. We don't <laughs> quite know it. I think it's amazing. It's just perfect the way you did it just now. I but love this, that. <laughs> this, in this book, we, we have our, our publisher said, you know what? You guys are so associated with heart disease and heart smart, heart healthy recipes. Let's go through and indicate which recipes in here are heart disease friendly. So each one of these recipes says, you know, this is heart disease friendly or to make this heart disease friendly, change out the walnuts for cannellini beans or whatever, um, or don't put the walnuts on the salad, simple switches. And if it's not heart disease friendly, it doesn't even say so. It just, you know, move on to the next one. All right. I wanted to show you that oh, yeah. way back in prevent and reverse heart disease, change dusty, dusty burritos. <laughs> this is very old. <laughs> okay, what is in Jane's the burritos? Jane's I need to know. Recipe off. <laughs> Wait, what was that? What is what is in Jane's burrito? Because I need to know this now. Me oh. too. It, this is from almost 15 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> One large onion, a couple of zucchini, yellow squash, bell pepper, broccoli, bok choy refried beans, pinto beans, brown rice, cilantro, and non-fat tortillas. Sounds, it's good. It's salsa. Amazing. Good. I mean, Amazing. they were good, but they were the only thing I can remember. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, if you were to subsist on only one thing, that it feels very much like that burrito, you, you yeah. could subsist on it happily for I me. I choose nori rolls. I am just crazy about sushi and nori rolls. Yeah. Oh, they're so balanced for me in, in my palate for some reason. I don't want, I don't want dessert. I don't want more. I, they hit all the, they hit every, they hit everything. And I'm like, hmm, at peace. And okay, we have in here, we have a, a nori. 
Well, this <laughs> we is have- a, because this is a good place to segue because I, I mean, further to your point of like really just sort of like being focused on heart disease reversal. And, you know, as a dietitian, one of the things that I always tell people is that like what you do to stay well and what is generally healthy is very different than what you do to become well when you're unwell, you know, like it's, it's what you do when you have heart disease to get healthier is really different than like, if you start on like a level healthy playing field and you just want to stay that way. And so for you guys, what are some of your favorite meals? Like, you know, both as parents, you have kids feeding kids. Like what are some of the, just like family staple meals in your households? I'm going to start with what I learned after years I've never really half the time not eating breakfast, half the time eating bad breakfasts and, you know, just run the breakfast on the run. I have a very strong feeling that I would like to eat the food that is going to be the best for me. Out of the gate, uh, of whatever it is. And I have, and it's, this is, this is in our book. It's in lots uh, of our books. Actually. Yeah. But I um, want to have oats and I, and, and speaking to families and to have with kids, you know, give some kind of oats, whether it's in pancakes, it's in waffles, it's just in oatmeal. It's such a powerful way to get children to eat something really not, healthy. Not the sugary, salty, flavory. Not, not, just oats. get them with fruit, lots of fruit. Anyway, but I love steel cut oats is Anne's warrior oats we call it in our book and they're her savory oats they're so amazing here tell her tell her what's in it and it's in it as a, a turmeric which i think is good to put in as and as much as and anywhere you can put it it's some a nutritional yeast because it makes it uh, the mouth feels good it's not it makes a difference when i don't have it and then two things that i think are key and that is shiitake mushrooms, just about a little handful. And then about two cups of chopped kale or any greens. I have used radish greens. I have used carrot tops. I mean, any greens. Um, I put in a couple, about two and a half cups of water or and maybe a, and a little bit of shiitake no, sriracha. Uh, sriracha hot sauce. Just a little. I mean, not much, but it, when I don't do it and forget it, it's, there's a blandness to it. And, and it when just, it's done cooking for an illogically short amount of time. I like it to be like a, <laughs> like a, a thick soup. It then coagulates enough to, Jane doesn't like that word, it thickens enough. It thickens. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, to be delicious. Anyway, and then you I, add chia and flax. Oh yeah, chia and flax. And I love starting my day knowing that I've got things that I really want to have in my body, in my body. Yeah, I love that approach. The idea that like you, I mean, you set the tone, right? And you know that right. the first, the first thing, like not just like from a nutrient density perspective, but the idea of like, no, like I want to give my body a gift. And I want to do it like first thing in the morning. Like that's how I want to start my day by like honoring my body and giving it something amazing. And, you know, we vastly underestimate things like oats, like oats are such a powerful food and, you know, kale. And I love kale, honestly, like I've like, I love it. I am that dietitian cliche, but I think we like all the, all the like attention goes to kale and to berries and like actually oats are incredible. They're affordable they're deeply powerful foods. They lower, they, they help reduce your cholesterol. They lower inflammation. They're dose responsive. They keep your sugar level. I mean, especially if you don't go down to the quick cooking of the instant, yeah. just stay everything above that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if I had to answer your question about uh, what food you like, I, my, res- <clears throat> my response to breakfast is I actually am not I don't feel hunger in the morning. Like when I wake up, some people wake up from hunger. I feel like I just ate dinner. I don't know why. Like I, I eat plenty. I'm really, I mean, there's, there's plenty of me, um, but I'm not hungry until a little bit later. Like if it got up at, you know, eight o'clock, I wouldn't want to eat till probably like 10 30, but then I'm hungry and I want to eat. But what I want to eat is dinner. I want to eat my salad and my, and my rice and, and, like teriyaki tofu. I want to eat food. I don't want to have like, Hey, happy birthday. Here's your sweet breakfast. 
you know, I don't want that at all. Or, but I do love my mom's, we made so much fun for so many years of her, her Anne's warrior oats, her savory breakfast. We were like, my husband would say like, Anne's making her witch's brew. I can smell it from three rooms away, the witchy, witchy. And now we all have our own versions of the witch's brew. And I even Jazz have, is crazy. I, well, I, and I add pickled ginger and black pepper and. Oh yeah, I forgot black pepper. It helps the, the turmeric. Exactly. Um, but I, I uh, so I don't love that for breakfast, but what I do love is making food throughout the day for other stuff and my, our, our kids. We've got three college age kids and what they love. And so what I think I then love because it's such a affirmation from them is we have brown rice or some sort of um, like black rice noodles or s some sort of, it's, it's a little, little bit of an Asian profile. Um, so black rice, brown rice, brown rice noodles. Um, I love these black rice noodles from Lotus Foods, but what we do is we have, a, you know, obviously a foundation of greens beneath it, and then some tempeh or tofu that we've made this, I made this teriyaki sauce with, and the teriyaki sauce is so easy. It's just um, tamari, you know, soy sauce, a little maple syrup, a little tomato paste or ketchup if you don't have tomato paste, some ginger and some sesame seeds. And we all build our own bowls and we all do different amounts of greens or noodles or sauce or this or that, and then you top it with maybe, you know, green onions or maybe even mango or or who knows what other, we, we have tons well, of stuff so, sauce so, but, but that was one example of building bowls because building our bowls like this is the big important building bowl like with our arms with our our you know multi-generational word this is the third generation of plant-based eating in our family so i just love this shot because it's like what we do together well and the front, all these the different cover shows it. and well the cover we don't have our arms on it so um we wanted our arms on the cover. They took our arms off. We felt disarmed. Um, but each one of these is a different version of what I just told you. Like, you know, if it's with know, bar barley or sweet potato or white potato or you know, Yukon gold potato, or rice noodles, black, or rice. Rice, black rice, brown rice, barley, quinoa, whole wheat noodles. They're, it's all the same thing. So I really love building your own bowl. It isn't like, oh, here's your plate of food you've been sitting and waiting to eat that someone else is making for you and serving to you and you have no control of your own health destiny. No, here's a bowl, build your own bowl. Like really nourish yourself. I mean, I even go into this whole thing about the word pelvis means bowl and it holds the foundation of, of just women and life and creativity and pleasure and and like, what's more powerful than making your own bowl from the, who you are, your essence, your, your pelvis. Oh my gosh. Okay. There are so, there are so many things I'm going to ask you and so many things, but I, I want to, I want to start by coming back because we've talked a little bit about like what you love to eat. Are there specific plants you ensure you eat daily? Oats, greens, and grains. Oats and grains. I'd and maybe some blueberry type things, blueberries. I'd like to get them in every day, but I don't think I get them in every day. I get fruit see, in every, some see, fruit every day. I think that when people get up at, when my husband went off to work at six in the morning, he had to have breakfast. He had to have something that would keep him until he was through surgery. I mean, I think that it depends on what your life is. If you have, if you are, I mean, particularly in this COVID time when people were home, I mean, that was easy to, to do that. But um, yeah, I think, I think it makes a difference to, and I think it's key, especially at breakfast, to find something you like and make it the same every day. If you're leaving the house at seven or eight, you don't want to have to fuss around. You just want to know what you're going to do and eat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it takes it takes that decision making out particularly early in the morning, right? And the same with lunch for people who are packing their lunch. I mean, you know, you need something that is going to be healthy and quick. Yeah, I love that. And same for dinner when you don't feel like cooking. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I wanted to ask specifically, so because you both have like. 30 years and like multiple books worth of experience creating plant-based recipes. Like what are your secrets 
for boosting flavor, because I think there's still a huge misconception that eating this way is not flavorful. So, Anne, you already mentioned like Sri Racha and nutritional yeast. I, I, I just bags and bags of nutritional yeast go through this house. I love it. So what are some of your other flavor boosters? I knew from cool. the master of, of all of this, but I will just give one thing before I, and that is uh, balsamic vinegars. And especially, I, I mean, it really, to finally, it makes a difference that it's a quality one. I mean, the cheap ones are fine in some instances, but the quality ones can really change the taste of just a little few drops on top of kale. I mean, a, a, on top of mushrooms, I, I can put it anywhere and it makes it. That's why good. we call her the acid queen because so, she's always putting vinegar on everything, uh, lemon or lime or oranges or lime zest, and orange zest and lemon zest. And it's that stuff. I mean, mother nature's got great flavor. And so I actually wanted to answer this with a different, not an item, but with a concept of just set the bar low. Like if you don't salt your food and if you don't grease your food, you're tasting your food and it tastes good. So it's not like there's some crazy magical thing. I do think when you're making a dish, like we have something called the green lightning bowl. And what I love oh, about it's that- just amazing. And it's not, it's cooked rice noodles. It's cooked, it's raw, you know, kale just chopped up into bit, bit, bits, bit, bits. Um, and maybe some cilantro if people like it. And if people don't have heart disease or trying to work with their obesity or type two diabetes, like there's a little avocado. Um, but then the, the dressing that goes with this basic, basic, basic food has this Shazam to it. And it's this, it's kind of has an acid to go with what you already have, which is a little bit of fat, maybe in the avocado and some tones in the cilantro and the bitterness of the kale with some, I don't, I don't taste the bitterness, but some people do. And then the foundation of these noodles, but it's got some tamari and some maple syrup. Those sort of, are, those are two basic players for me. And obviously they're sort of sweet and salt, but a um, ton of lime is in this and tons of lime zest is in this dressing along with some garlic, along with ginger and a little jalapeno. So it's got some heat, some sweet, some acid, and maybe to be met with the fat of the of the um, avocado or not, but just getting the balance of all those sort of things in there really helps. And I love how the green lightning bowl, which is in the engine two cookbook, it is like another one of those things where I'm like, I don't need to eat much of this. I don't want dessert. I'm so balanced. Um, our neighbor is a professor. Our neighbor Vanessa is a professor, and she just did a YouTube for us. We have a YouTube channel. I don't know if you know. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to assume, but our neighbor, Vanessa, um, the professor just did a, she does research in Indonesia. And so one of the dishes she makes all, all, all the time and made for us when we first moved here, um, when they first moved here was gado gado, which is uh, basically a ton of vegetables that are all, you know, their ecology and some tempeh, which I didn't know comes from Indonesia and peanut sauce. And every, she said, every woman peanut sauce is how you get to know her the way that you get to know a Scottish woman by her shortbread I thought that was so funny um but uh but I love it I feel like that was the same thing she said you want to have a balance of all these flavors and then you're not you're going to be satisfied by the different vegetables and the sauce and everything yeah and in, in Ayurvedic tradition, there is this idea of having all of the tastes at a meal. And I do, I do feel like, you know, there's a lot behind that, that idea, especially because you, you positioned it as when I eat this, I was like, I don't even need dessert. And it is that concept, that idea of being so utterly satisfied by the flavors and everything that's in a meal. And I feel like that's the ideal, like building a meal like that. Cause you're like, that I, I want for nothing. Like it's all right here. Yep. Speaking of dessert, Jane. Oh dear. <laughs> we got, we got the, the contract for our book, March 7th of 2020. So right before the world went sideways and we were kind of lucky because we had something to do for the next 
who knows we live, how we long. Live, we live next door to each other. Yes, yeah, so not, not across the street, next door. Pine needle path. <laughs> and so I would go to the store because I didn't want these guys going to the store because who knew what was happening. But anyway, we started making recipes and then and we had about two years to get this book done. And we had some, we were making some more. And we were just, at one point we looked up and said, okay, where are we with all this? Where are we with all this? How, what do we have here? And we had, um, cause it has a, t you know, you probably have done things like this. You have to t t test, retest, 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 have someone else test, taste test, da, 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 and then bah, this takes forever. But anyway, we had about six breakfasts, about six lunches, maybe eight dinners. I hadn't figured out the bowls yet. Exactly. So anyway, and some dressings and some sides, we had 44 desserts. So we knew <laughs> we were on track to make a great book for women when we had 44 desserts. Now we don't have 44 desserts. Now. We have 54. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. We should count. But the crazy thing count. is that during COVID, uh, we did not go out and we started, we started watching a lot more TV. And so at night uh, around maybe 8.30 or 9, we would be watching TV and I'd hear the door open and my mouth would begin to water because it would be Jane again with another uh, taste test for one of the brownies she was making. And it turns out it took 12 <laughs> tries on one of the brownies before you got it just right. And <laughs> so that was that that was fun. It's very sad when it ended. I'm counting 34, 34, 34, 34. Really? Oh, that's 34. Amazing. <laughs> well, that's like, I mean, like here, we've got all these different um puddings. variations and yeah. Yeah, so there's that's eight there, but it's all very similar. You're just changing the lemon for the lime and the chocolate and then chocolate mint and uh, strawberry raspberry. So there's, yeah, we we reduce some of our 44 to 34. <laughs> it's a very respectable number of desserts, I feel. And very I, respectable. I'm glad you agree. Thank you for the affirmation. <laughs> well, and, and unfortunately, or but fortunately, I I'm, don't do much with desserts. So I um, you taste them. I taste them, them very gladly, well. Glad them gladly. So it's always such a delight. Look at this one as UK dietitian. Look at okay. this one. Dun, 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 dun. You're not going to believe what's in this. Tell her what it's Okay, what, it, what are in the lemon pie squares? Because those look absolutely amazing. Okay. Look again. Look again. Oh, she's <laughs> such a beauty. Be okay, it? you probably know the crust is, you know, it's a it's not a date nut. It's actually a raisin pecan crust. And, and the topping, the white topping here, is uh, the silken tofu um, lemon maple syrup. The, the you know we've all done a million times. Yeah, the lemon pie filling. What do you think it is? It's that texture. Um, is there aquafaba in it? Maybe. No, I can't stand that stuff. I can't make it. Whip. I won't oh, use I sugar. Can. We won't use sugar, so I, I can't make it. Whip, 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 whip. Yeah, that's I true. Okay. I made aquafaba, and with it's me. not. It's not more silken tofu. No. Mm. All right. Tell me. No. You have to guess. I'm going to give you a clue. It is not categorically what you would you typically think breakfast. You're going to get it. It's not a breakfast? No, no. It's a, a breakfast type food that I use as the foundation. Oh, it's oats? Yes. It's oatmeal that I <laughs> immersion blender. Could we have a lemon oatmeal as one of our breakfasts? It's got a little lemon, a little zest, a little sweet. So I just decided to amp it up. So I had more zest, more lemon, more sweet. And I used those, what are those threads that make things yellow? Saffron. Saffron to make it yellow. And so it's like, it doesn't have that like eggy texture necessarily, but it's because when, when oatmeal's cold, it sets and you can slice it. Of course, because of the, the soluble fiber, right? Like it's, exactly. it's a gelling fiber. Genius. So just, it's genius. <laughs> Thank <was> you. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so fun to make and try to figure out. And I'm like, mommy, what do you think it is? She's like, I don't know. Because <laughs> I have got a special love for that lemon. Well, you know, I got the, I, it, I got the um, inspiration from oh, this hilarious book I read. It was about Scotland and, you know, 
de decade uh, centuries ago and it was like you know 17 blah, i they opened the drawer for breakfast and they sliced the oatmeal from the drawer and i was like oh my god the cold scottish croft they're opening the drawer to slice the oatmeal and i could like see it and i thought this is like it's you know it's it's like frosting or a, yeah it, it anyway <laughs> so thanks Amazing. for that book Okay. I, uh, I want to shift gears a little bit because, you know, spending any time watching the two of you on your YouTube channel, on Instagram, like it's very clear that you're both absolutely bursting with energy and like, how much of that do you contribute? Because I mean, athletics also contribute being in like really great physical shape, but how much of that do you contribute to plants? I think she was born like a thousand watt bulb and apple didn't fall far from the tree, but to maintain that, I mean, kids, have, you know, are, have done that energy, but to maintain that energy, you do need to give yourself rocket fuel of plants every day. And I, and I agree. I think you also need to be able to sleep. Yeah. And How when I don't have energy is when I have had a bad sleep. How much do you sleep a night? As much as I can. I mean, I would yeah. love to get at least seven hours. I'd love to get more. 10. <laughs> but Jane, I, mean, I would love to, but I, you know. It, it, what do you sleep? How so much? it's much better now. So throughout having kids, particularly because my first did not sleep through the night until they were two and a half and sleeping through the night meant waking up at 4.30 in the morning. Um, so I went for a good solid 10 years of horrendous sleep deprivation. Before that, I was like, I don't know how anyone survives on less than eight hours. Well, mama, you're going to find out. And then finally, I was having such trouble with TMJ pain in my jaw, just like all the muscles in my, like, that's where I hold my tension is apparently in my face. And I had a practitioner because you think that you'd like know all these things. And it, and I was like, oh, magnesium doesn't work. And a practitioner was like, add L-theanine to your magnesium changed my life. So most nights, even what now, are those things? What are those? Are those um... So magnesium, the mineral magnesium. Um, yeah. So found in like, you know, nuts, seeds, whole grains, but I take um, 400 milligrams of a type of magnesium called glycinate or bisglycinate. It's the same thing. And then I add L-theanine. L-theanine is the amino acid found in matcha. Oh. The two of them together just regulate your nervous system. And you can literally, when it hits, you just feel like a wash. And now I absolutely sleep seven hours a night and it has rechanged my life. So L-theanine and magnesium. Magnesium glycinate just for sleep. It's amazing. And they're, they're both nutrients. It's like a mineral and an amino acid. Do you and take like a tincture or do you take it as a just as a, like caps? Like caps, it's really and they're not even that expensive. Like, and I'm like, all right, my body just drinks it down. So, so what about what about just using doing the matcha and doing the and eating nuts? I mean, what is that? Is it matcha? Is this has caffeine though? Well, so matcha has caffeine, that's right. So the L-theanine is like stripped out. So it's just the amino acid, but it is the reason why matcha, it doesn't give you the jitters like coffee because L-theanine opposes the action of caffeine in the body. So it gives you just like a really calm alertness instead of coffee, which can like get you racing. And matcha, that's the reason why matcha doesn't do that. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Um, cool. Razzle dazzle. So there um, we go. If people don't sleep, there's a tip. <laughs> I must say for years and years, I would get up at five. I want, I was writing. I was um, warming you know, the and, plants, going for runs. No, I mean, <laughs> you do uh, everything. Yeah, I, I, now I don't. I get up at six. Oh, you lazy bones. I sleep as long as I can because I don't, working from home, it's a, such a luxury, but I'm so thankful and want to just, you know, put it back out there as a, as energy. Like, thank you. I have energy. Um, uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to tell you, or I wanted to ask, so do you do, a, I, do you do appointments about uh, what you just talked about was so beautifully said. Yeah. You're 
So, so I do a lot of writing, you know, I have a blog with very nerdy, very long blog posts and I do have a private practice, but I don't see one-on-one clients myself anymore. So I have amazing dietitian who sees, who sees our clients, but yeah, we help people with all sorts of things like that. So, um, I want to ask you guys, uh, because, you know, myself, you know, in my mid forties, um, I think that in our culture, we have so many misconceptions about aging. And I think both of you kind of smash those misconceptions about aging quite nicely. Thank you very much. Um, you. you know, like to you, I wanted to ask, because I had this idea when I see that you both, this idea of sort of ageless living, you know, the idea that it is about if like every year is a gift and our culture certainly doesn't treat it as such. Like, what does the idea of like ageless living mean to you? Well, I feel definitely that you have to live like this and then die. Live, live long, live long and and by vitality, live with vitality, die fast, live long, die fast is what she always says. Um, which I, like that's, that's uh, when I was, my husband and I were like doing a quick writing exercise one time and what came out of my mouth, what came out of my pen was my mom is my daily dose of hell. Yeah. Because to, to age without any, with full vitality, energy, action, and no lifestyle medication um, at all. And like she, we can go for a five mile walk right now. And she's been up all day, did presentation for five hours. And now we're doing this with you. And she's, we actually have an appointment. So. Actually, um, I really, I really, I, ha- I, I was introduced I think to, about the, aging. to the samurai saw. I don't know if you know the samurai yeah. saw, but it's this little saw that is just so good. And we have a tree that I don't like that is dead. And I, you know, the samurai saw is good on a little thing. And this is just maybe a little bigger than the samurai saw, but I am going to go and try and cut this tree down with my samurai she, saw. Well, she has so much, she's like deforestation woman out there. We're just cutting all these. I'm really happy when I'm clearing wood. And <laughs> that's like me and weeds. I've discovered like a depth of happiness and contentment that I never thought I would simply yanking weeds out of the dirt. Oh, and I love getting up early when there is not, when the sun isn't up and we out in the nice. garden and um, just hoeing and, you know, taking, doing that with, you just but, hear the birds and the clouds. I want to respond to what you said about the uh, ageless living, because I, I like how you are saying that. I like how you say things very much, Desiree. Thank you. But um, uh, we just had a podcast with um, somebody and and he said like, gosh, when I get to be your age, and it was kind of like, I don't know, there was something that I, the way he said it, it sort of felt like, oh, you know what, but I felt like the way to say it is kind of how you said it, just age doesn't feel like how, what we're living, we're living life with life and with vitality and liveliness, and I, and that's, again, part of what her book was about, I know I keep bringing it back to the book, but, As you okay. should. This is this is the time. But, but it's because women. I don't think that we really get um, all the cues that we, that we should from public health announcements. And so, when he in in here, we talk about how plants powerfully support women, and we've already touched on how our mindset it completely helps our mindset. Like we don't think about what we should or shouldn't eat in a day. Like this is what we eat and we eat a ton and then we love it all in the, you know, in this realm. And this realm is getting bigger and bigger with more plants that we find and eat. Anyway, um, so our, from our head to our toes, this helps us, you know, we have so much energy and in our gut, we feel like we're feeding our gut. And um, I talk, I don't know if you saw in the book because we, I don't know what, if we, if you got a book or not. Yeah, I got but, a PDF, yeah. Um, but I teach middle school sex ed. So I'm going to talk about women from front please to back. Front do. Down below. Please do. And I don't have my shirt. Um, I usually have my, I have a t-shirt that has C-U-V-A, Kuva. As a matter of fact, yes. I couldn't believe it. Excuse me. I, my husband put on this shirt the other day and she said, this shirt is kind of small. And I looked at it and it said C-U-V-A across the front. You'll see in a minute why, what it is. And, and um, it, it, it stands for the uh, undercarriage of women from front to back, meaning the clitoris, urethra, vagina, anus, 
clitoris, clit, whatever you call it. So I'm gonna start from the backside. A, the anus back here, like this powerful, plants powerfully support all of us humans, but especially women, hear me out. Um, eating plants coats your colon, your intestines, your whole body with, the, with all the high fiber your microbiome wants and needs. And there's not an issue of constipation. Bazillion people all over North America, the whole world deal with or can't deal with constipation every day. They think pooping once a week is normal. It's not. I mean, I have no idea how many times I'm like a rabbit just every day, all day, just there it goes. So constipation is not an issue. And so straining is not an issue. So diverticulitis is not an issue. People think that they have this outpouching from pushing so they can't eat seeds and corn. They should have eaten more seeds and corn to begin with and they wouldn't be having this diverticulitis or diverticula issue. And thus with that hemorrhoids and hemorrhoids are again, just from straining and the weight on those veins that pop out outside of the anus itself. So the A, the A for anus and all above are so healthy and it's such a relief to not be burdened by that. And then the next is V the for in the CUVA, C-U-V-A. V stands for the vaginal space um, in the vagina, which is this, it's just a space. It's like a lobby. My middle school kids are always like, I'll be a bellhop. I'll meet you in the lobby. <laughs> so they love this. But it's just a space. I mean, it doesn't really do anything but host like a tampon, maybe a penis and a baby coming out. So it's a space and, but everything above it, the, you know, the cervix, the uterus, the endometrium, the, 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 the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, they all completely benefit from a whole food plant-based diet and not having other hormones dictating what the ovaries want to say and do and aligning of the uterus. I'm sure you've got many women who've got these like stalactites of fibroids growing in their uterus. It's just from being, it's this get off dairy get off meat and have your own hormones and your own body be feeding itself. And you will not grow these strange creatures inside your womb. It is amazing that you said that. And I'll, and I'll interject because I want to hear the C and the U in a sec, but people get very, very nervous about consuming soy foods. Oh. And they're like, Oh, the hormones, the hormones, but I'm sorry, if you consume meat and dairy, like you are actually consuming the hormones present in the animal. Whereas <laughs> like, Way Soy is a wonder thing. It's a moderator. It's a like liberator. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so getting up, so you're the fibroids that we have a whole testimony in the, in their book about this yeah. woman who had, she didn't, she was supposed to have a hysterectomy, but she went on plant-based and she had a baby. I wanted them to call their baby fib for, for, <laughs> because of the fibroid. Um, anyway. Um, and I'll get to the va vaginal space health in a second, but urethra, um, and that's because uh, we urinate from there. And above that is the, you know, the ureters, the kidneys and the bladder and all that stuff. And being on a whole food plant-based diet absolutely helps keep your, your, that whole system clean. And it, it's our filtration system of our body. And we need to have every little glomerular, everything in our kidney. I don't want to get into science too much here, but every part of our kidney wants to not have this overburden of, of too much protein, which everyone's just like, get more protein, get more protein. Like that's keep your filtration system clean. Take it easy on the protein. Mother nature got it right. The right balance and all the food that she makes for us. Chicken. And, but yeah, I know. And, um, uh, people often, you know, Dr. Michael Greger especially says that chickens tend to have this bacterial reservoir is a, a resistant bacteria that can get, you know, you can't get rid of it really. Um, and it causes all these UTIs. And so, you know, fear that you might have this or you may have this bacteria in you. And then if you get with a partner and he or she or they also have this bacteria, you're just kind of caught in this awful UTI cycle. Um, and then C, the clitoris, the clitoris, the clit, or whatever you want to call it, um, this bundle of tissue is the exact same tissue of the head of the penis, the glands of the penis, the G L A N S. And that is. It's pretty cool how we, we, women and men are all made in utero, like whatever you identify with, rock on, identify how you do, but biologically male and female bodies have the same Legos. Men have nipples, we have nipples, ha ha. So down below, we have this glands, which 8,000 nerves for, for sexual pleasure. And the shaft of the penis, which is called the corpus cavernosa, we also have that, but it's 
on the above the floor of our pelvis and it goes from the clitoris and it fills up with blood as we get more and more aroused and it wraps around the vaginal space letting blood um the blood flow from this from the the great it's called the cura what a weird name cura but these the corpus cavernosa wraps around the vaginal space when we're aroused and helps create plat uh, the plasma that creates lubrication which is a woman's sign for readiness. Sorry if you're confused by this. It's really clear in the book. But um, <laughs> the, the plasma from, from the blood in the vaginal space, along with lady chemicals, makes lubrication. Our sign for readiness, a man's sign for readiness is erection. So blood flow is a very important part of all of this. And being on a whole food plant-based diet, you're going to be like aroused, peeing regularly, lubricated, and pooping up a storm. So from front to back, head to toe, we are so protected by it plants. I love Kuva, this. Kuva, Kuva. I have my t-shirt. I have not, I was, am I sitting on it? Like I, I know my t-shirt is not with me, but it, it's you need like a Kuva post, like poster behind you, like on the wall. Like, and I, I love, okay. Love, love, love. I feel like we could have a whole conversation about this oh, subject because okay. you're a nurse and people don't necessarily realize you're also a nurse and a sexual health educator. And I love that you put it in the book because like so many things, the idea of like being a woman, getting older and not being defined by that age because men don't get defined by that age. You know, we do, which is malarkey and also owning, owning the physicality of your body, owning your sexuality, like all of these things are like, to me, that's so much when I, when I read your book, it's like, there's the warrior piece, like the unapologetic ageless. This is who I am. Live Fierce, stay, stay bold, eat delicious. Oh my God. Okay. I want to be mindful of your time because I know that you have to go. And I had so many other things that I want to ask you, but I also feel like that's the perfect sort of place to leave off. But if you have a couple more minutes, I do rapid fire. Can oh, we go, do go, rapid go. fire? Okay. Amazing. So the condiment spice or herb you cannot live without. Condiment, spice, or herb. I <laughs> love the anguish on your faces at this question. You're like, why do you make me choose against like from my children? But I, but you I, want to eat turmeric, but I want to eat turmeric, but it's not necessarily the flavor. You're asking for a flavor. Or, or really, I mean, you can't live without it for whatever reason. So turmeric could absolutely be yours. I'd say ginger. Ooh, I really yeah. Love ginger in what it does to things. I don't like it alone, but like, mm. um, garlic, onion. Um, I, I like them all. Me too. I know it's like you know, like, yeah. Which is your which, favorite recipe? It's it's hard. Yeah, it is, it is hard. Which is why I didn't ask you that because people ask me that all the time. What's your favorite your recipe? Favorite like, like, don't ask your favorite recipe. No, no. Okay thing that surprises you the most about getting older it's not so bad yes <laughs> right well i guess you could say that you get older you get better at everything but, yeah the only thing that surprises me is the sort of collapse of bosoms and you know skin and yeah so and, what? And, I mean and, and 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 what surprises me is when i really look in a mirror and i think is that my face you know, has that happened? Because I don't feel it. Oh yeah, that, that's, I love that. It's the old shoe that can do anything. Love it. Oh my gosh. Okay, favorite weeknight dinner. So like fast, you're tired. It's been a long day. What do you make? Leftovers. I would, uh, I, I would love a portobello burger. Just mm. a portobello baked as a burger with sprouts you know fill arugula tomato i will go with my i love having a little bit of extra brown rice and then some just veggie not cooked veggies like as a base greens and stuff and if we have any extra sauce um even like a little bit in the jar I mean, we have so many sauces in this book i mean lemon tahini uh, Jane's spicy almond to die for peanut sauce um walnut ginger there was a ginger again. Yeah. What is a just, what is a vegan's favorite food? Sauce, a hundred percent. Yes, that nails it. <laughs> okay, two more. 
what's, what do you think is the most important first step for anyone who wants to go plant-based? Do it start and, and do it. And you know, don't do it piecemeal, just start. do it. Because when you do it piecemeal, you never kind of change your taste. hundred percent is easier than 99%. Oh, I love it. I feel like that's the quote of the episode. That's awesome. Okay. And the last one for both of you, you're given 20 extra minutes today. You are not allowed to work. You're not allowed to do something productive. It has to be just for you. What do you do? Meditate. Mm. Oh, I would like to go out and just. Or I would walk watch. longer with my dog or, or I meditate. Oh, I know. Oh, we have this outdoor shower. I love my outdoor shower. And I was in the outdoor shower the other day and this, this amazing gray bird landed on a, a balcony. And I looked at it and I thought it's a funny bird. And then it flew off and I realized it had an orange belly. And I went over and sort of, I, I was kind of half Straight naked. Straight from your shower? <laughs> my shower. <laughs> went over to see wh where it had gone. And it was sitting beside this stream and it had this sort of fat, bright kind of orange belly. It wasn't a robin. And it was, and then it was sitting there and sitting there and it didn't mind me. And suddenly down the stream came a muskrat going down the stream and it flew off. And I cannot figure out what kind of bird it is, but I would just like to, it was so much fun watching that whole episode. That's beautiful. I'd like 20 minutes to do that. Amazing. Oh, Anne and Jane Esselstyn, you are both incredible. Everyone needs to pick up plant-based warrior woman. Be, be a plant-based plant woman, woman warrior. warrior. But I throw that back at you because okay. you are amazing. Plant, yeah, you are totally amazing. So fun to Thank talk you. to you. I had so much fun.